So Francis ever gets through. I know. So friends, I'm just going to give for our viewers, uh, let me give you a little understanding of what's going on here. Uh, we had some, because we are streaming this on the internet, our, uh, the streaming on our laptops are getting a little wild. So literally what you were watching is the camera over my shoulder looking at my laptop that I am talking into, <laughs> talking to <laughs> Sharon. And there's a beautiful, beautiful Terry. Hello, Terry. It's so good to see you. There are like 300 different screens. <laughs> That's awesome. We're in, we're in three different screens, and now I have another one. Is that Francis? Oh, yes. Great. So, let me explain. We're doing the best we can. We're doing great. Uh, if people want to hire our technology, they can donate to Reboot Theater. That's right. <laughs> and we can get a tech crew that isn't just one guy who's doing this in his time off. Thank you, Bob. And uh, yeah, so thank you so much for joining me. Uh, who is here with us? We have uh, so far uh, Sharon Gabbett and Terry Davis, who used to be on the acclaimed hit series, The Edge of Night. <laughs> Um, and they have graciously go donated their time to chat about their experiences uh, on the soap and their careers and beyond. So uh, also full disclosure, Sharon Gabbett is my mom. <laughs> so if I say mom, that's why. Um, don't freak out. <laughs> yeah, it's not a weird nickname. It's just what I call her. So um, mom. Just to be, make this even more hilarious, I just got a text from Frances and she says, where is everyone? <laughs> I have no idea in what technological box hell Frances She's in now. some <laughs> chat room with a bunch of weirdos somewhere. <laughs> she's, she's in that fucking hell that I would Oh my god. She's somewhere going, where is everyone? So you don't. I guess not. I mean, look. <laughs> I gave her. I know. No, I gave her the link. Uh, I don't know. So yes. let's let's discuss the Edge of Night. So can Perfect. tell Perfect. us a little Perfect. bit about the show. Yeah. Yes. Let's see this clip. Oh my God. We're gonna start off with a clip from the Edge of Night. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yeah. This our tech thing is just a circle. Okay, Terry. I'm going to put you down for a second. <laughs> You mostly see my face. Oh my god. Wait, hold it straight. Everyone's gonna get nauseous. Right there, don't move, Mom. Yes. Oh my God. Who does not love a slap? I mean, so how, how, how often do you guys get to slap each other? Oh, wait, let me get Oh, is there another one? Okay, no. Um, actually, Terry, I don't know how many times you got to slap or get slapped, but I got, <laughs> I got a lot of opportunities. I got slapped quite a few times. Well, I mean, that's understandable. <laughs> Yes. So, <laughs> explain your characters a little bit. So, Terry, t tell us more about April, your character on the show. Uh, she, uh, April, was the the uh, the young innocent, mm -hmm. the the motherless child with a gorgeous older brother. <laughs> yes, 
Nice. Oh my I, God! <laughs> of course. And I had heart surgery. Yes, and then I became wealthy and um, uh, married married the, the the hunk on the show Draper, the the lawyer, the um, the good the good guy, the good guy. My, uh, your mom hung out with all the bad guys. So you had a pretty nice arc. You had a really nice arc. You had like the good, like you got, you know, all of the nice things kind of happened to you. She was the heroine. And heroine. Hey, can you FaceTime Francis from your phone or something? Maybe. Somebody? Yeah, try that. Actually, no, I can't because I have an Android. Do you need the phone? Oh, okay. Yeah, she has an iPhone. Okay, wait. Yes, do you have an iPhone? Yes. Can I FaceTime her from an iPad when I'm on... This phone, like two different. Get me to. Uh, how do you do a phone call? How do you? No, I want I a FaceTime. Love to get her on here. All right, I'm FaceTiming Francis right now. Okay, good. Um, so, mom, tell us about tell us about Raven, the infamous, for people well, who don't know. Well, when I first, well, first, you know what? I'd like to give a little background about the Edge of Night. For yeah, do. No, because it yeah. was a really, really special show. First of all, this was mid '70s and uh, and '80s when soap was, you know, th this was the heyday of soap with Luke and Laura and Elizabeth Taylor and everything. So, and we were in New York City at a time where my first apartment was uh, a parlor floor apartment in a brownstone one block from Central Park for three hundred dollars. Oh my God! You're kidding me. <laughs> so there were tons of actors. You know what? From, York then reminded me of um, how do I it reminded me call. of Seattle because there was so much that, theater going on there time. free theater uh, and things were cheap number. and there were all these hippies from 60s going there so it was a lot like Seattle is now sure uh, where you know just up and coming and, and yeah and interestingly enough the edge of night was a lot like reboot and that I think we had the smallest budget of any show <laughs> But we made magic, didn't we, Terry? We made yeah, but it was also a half an hour. A lot on of the other shows were an hour. So our show was really a family. It was shot in in real time. Um, we it, shot it like it was live. Yeah. We yes. did it like it was live. We're talking a show a day, a show every yeah. day. And so you shoot it as if it were live so that everyone was on the set at the same time looking at everyone else's scenes. Yeah. yeah. And so we were on that. For better or worse. <laughs> yes. What yeah, was... Sometimes you got food. Sometimes well, you got food. Well, sometimes so got... how often would you, get, would you get scripts like that day? Like rewrites or anything like that? Uh, no, we got them about a week or two in advance. Oh, wow. But there was a special skill to make because think about it, you would have to do maybe 10 or 20 pages on one day, then forget it all, and then learn 10 or 20. Oh my pages. God. You couldn't really learn your lines until the day, the day before, before, or the day, right? And, and find strategic places to put, put <laughs> To put cues? That's brilliant. Exactly. And then they had a teleprompter, but you know, it was there was a big skill in learning to... Uh, um, Francis just texted me, where is everybody? I'm on this thing all alone. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to FaceTime her with another iPhone, but I don't have an iPhone, so I can't FaceTime with okay. her. Um, I think that, yeah, I don't know. I don't even know how to, I don't know where she is. I know, Saturday. I don't, like, we've only gave her one link, and it was to this, so I don't know. Did she, if, is there a green button that says join Google Hangouts? Because she needs to click that. Like, you click the link and then it says, Join. Not it won't allow, your technology. It won't allow us to FaceTime her. We're trying to FaceTime Francis, and it says that that number cannot be FaceTimed. <laughs> okay. She probably blocked people from like. For real reason. Um, can you? I think you can multiple FaceTime people. I am. Uh... Yes, you can. Okay. You yeah. can. Francis, are you there? I just, uh... <laughs> we're going to do
do this is going to be hilarious. Come on, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Wait, I'm looking. So well, looking. Yeah. While they figure that out, I will tell um, my history with The Edge of Night is that uh, when I was like, I don't know, two or three, I would get brought into the, uh, the green room. And there was always some sort of sports game on. And I basically would just be, here. Oh. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> I hear a Francis. Wait, did I? Well, I'm, I'm the only one on this thing that says Hangout. I don't know. That's the link she, she sent me. I don't know. Let me see. I mean, we can hear you. See Francis? I don't see her, but I hear her. And if you put her on your if you put your <laughs> hi Franny. <laughs> Terry, what's is that on? her in the top right? I the link and I'm I'm just <laughs> I couldn't myself. I couldn't, I couldn't get on it either. So um, All right. next well, time. I kind of see Francis in a reflection of the phone. This is like some Inception shit. We are. As long as we can all hear each other, it's fine. Actually, so, in any case. Oh, there you are. Yeah, there's Terry. Yeah. So Francis can see Terry. Can you hear Francis? I can hear Francis, yeah. Okay. So, um, we just, look at how cute you are. We just showed the clip. I tried to get Jasmine to FaceTime you so we could show you on, but it said you're not, you can't get FaceTimed, Francis. It doesn't matter. We're going to move on. We can hear everyone because people are just watching us play with technology, which I feel like. <laughs> All right. So let's, you know, I just want to say, and this is really sad, but you have three senior citizens. <laughs> We're doing great. You're lucky you can hear us at all. Yeah. I'm lucky that you guys agreed to do this. I can't tell you how, like, I'm stoked. I feel bad that you guys are like, Jasmine doesn't know what the fuck they are doing. Yes, this is better. <laughs> I can put on a show, but I cannot get four people to talk over the internet. What can I say? Uh, actually, I have a couple, I have some, I have some viewer questions. Yes, a viewer question. Let's do that. Okay, so, let's do that. Oh. Um, this is from, these are all from uh, William Joseph Reynolds. Thank you, friend. <laughs> Our viewer. Our viewer. Uh, <laughs> I have no idea how many viewers we are. There's too much technology, I can't tell. So, the first question is for Francis. Um, says, the Children of Earth storyline was abruptly shortened due to the mass murder-suicide at Jonestown. Yes. I'm going to give you the question, Francis. Hold on. Oh, I'm do you have it? Yeah. So the, the, you were the only one, actually, of a, the three of us that were a part of the Children of the Earth storyline, you lucky thing. <laughs> remember that, Francis? Vaguely. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a problem. Because the question was, what did you think of that storyline? Well, no, because it was interrupted due to Jonestown. Oh, it was, I know, it was, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was the best thing I've ever been involved in. <laughs> Are, are they are, are they listening to us talk right yes. now? Oh yeah, you're live. <laughs> yes. right yes. It was fabulous. That God <laughs> with the accent, the name I can't remember. Yeah, no, well, the that, children that of the earth. That was the storyline that was the takeoff on the um, the Jones Town. Well, that's why they. That's that, why it was so. It was so yes. abruptly cut. That's why they abruptly ended it because yeah. the Jones thing came up. So, what were, so the, the question is, what were your thoughts when that happened? Yes, yes, Jasmine, do you have another so the question? Qu no, the question was, what were Francis's thoughts when they ended it because of Jonestown? Was that, like, was everyone copacetic with that, like, understanding, or were people mad? <laughs> yes. Well, I have an, another it's question. that it was a smart move, right, Franny? I mean, yes, let's end this storyline. Yeah. It does, you know. I mean, I'm just helping you out here, Francis, because I know you, you know, you, uh, well, I, you know, it takes a village. So among the three of us, we should be able to complete a sentence. <laughs> <laughs> this is why you've been best friends for only like 10 years. I mean, how old are you? Yeah, like 30? Uh, the place of Game of Thrones. So the Watchmen comes out in Watchmen, Watchmen, Watchmen in 2019. Ooh, yes. 
the, on HBO, they're going to take the place of Game of Thrones. That was another question that I had for Francis. That's good. But let's, so let's just rag a little bit on New York City in the 70s and, and the theater scene there because, um, again, we were... I thought you were going to go into our private parties, but I guess that's... Well, one of the great things about it, right, was that Frances had a huge loft. And she was, her partner at that time was sort of a bohemian photographer. And we would frequently have parties there, um, not not too late and only on the weekends, because on soaps, you've got to be in there at 7 a.m. and you got to look good by the end of the day. So we went to bed early, but uh, we did have many, many parties there where where we would be taking pictures or do creative things or make food. I mean, it was yeah, like, well, to be like, young and earning a living in New York City yeah. in the 70s was pretty spectacular. Yeah, I bet. And early 80s, right? Yeah. And yeah. again, we were discussing that reboot theater is sort of similar to The Edge of Night in that it's low budget but makes magic. So please, everybody who's listening to this technological nightmare. Five, <laughs> five, ten dollars, please give. And, uh, oh, Twenty-five dollars. Yeah, yes. Raise Pawn the your jewels and rattle your pearls. <laughs> so that next year, well, we can have some. I don't know. Next year, if you give us enough money, we'll fly the three of you out and we'll do this in the lobby of the Ritz. <laughs> what did you say? Wait, Jasmine's was saying something. What? Oh, I said, if you give us enough money, we'll fly the three of you up here and we'll do it in the lobby of the Fairmont. <laughs> she said that if the fans uh, give enough money today that they'll fly all three of us to Seattle and then we'll all be sitting there. There you go. Much then better. we'll have a party. Yeah. Oh, we'll yes. have a girls weekend. Yes. Right. We'll have a girls weekend. Nothing like Seattle in December. <laughs> Here and Jasmine, and to say that I think it's it's one of the most spe well the most special thing about the Edge of Night is that the relationships that developed from that show have been timeless. Yeah. The three of us have been friends for. Um, I just celebrated my 39th wedding anniversary. Oh my God! Congratulations to you and Andy. Met, met on the edge of night, and my first baby was my edge of night baby, and we have been friends for. If I, let me see if it's 39, 40, 41, 42 years. That's how, amazing. How figure this out. Does anybody? <laughs> Mom is mad now. <laughs> So what does that make you, 43? So, uh, <laughs> so we've been like friends for that long. Way back in 77. <laughs> when I was, had to born. walk to work. We had to walk to work. That's right. In <laughs> the snow. And in the snow, bring our own lunch. So here's a question. If you had to reboot The Edge of Night and like recast anyone, however you wanted, how would, how would you reboot the cast of Edge and I? Who would you want to play if you couldn't play the part that you played? Uh, okay, a reboot question. If, if we could reboot the Edge of Night. And change whatever character to play whatever you wanted. Any, like, you know, way that we wanted to do it, who would we want to play? Well, first of all, let's just say it's a murder mystery melodrama. And that's wow. what, so we need to do that. It would, oh, it I just want to play Lois Kiss. Now, when, you know, I just want to become her, the grand dame. Yes. Uh, so if Terry would like to play Lois Kibbe, the grand dame. <laughs> and I'll uh, play Louis Turin. And you, yeah, there you go. <laughs> you'll play, and Francis wants to play Louis Turin, who is well, I think I, I really her father. To do is do a web series of these three characters. Oh my God! Yes. Are now. Yes. Of, no. of, yeah, of Raven, uh, Deborah, and April. Yeah. yeah. It would be sort of like a new uh, Golden Girls. <laughs> oh, but yeah. so much sexier. I mean, we should do a Golden Girls. We would be freaking hysterical. Is there any oh, yes. producers out there listening? Look yeah. at us. 
for the girls. <laughs> and you can film the whole web series just like this. Oh, you are daring, friends. Yes. And, uh, I'm getting farther away and you're getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> Jasmine just said we could film the whole series just like this. It would only take a few thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so, anything goes these days. Honestly. I mean, honestly, you could. Beth Grant called Prosperity, and that's how we're doing. We're shooting on all kinds of different cameras, whatever we've got in our drawers. Um, and I remember know, when you started stuff. that. So yeah, Frances is about... saying she's they've been she's been shooting her own like web series called Prosperity. Yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't have said whatever you have in your drawers, Francis. That could be taken on right? your dresser, perhaps. But it doesn't have a double meaning. Let's, let's keep this clean. Well, that got ruined earlier. Yeah, that got ruined already. I heard cursing in the beginning. Uh, of oh! Cursing? I know. Yeah. When you came on, you didn't know you were already live. Oh! Yeah, well, this technology stuff is, you know, I, I, I figure I'm pretty hip to it, but uh, yeah, not all the way. So what else, Jasmine? What, so what, let's see. What, what, There's another. Um, I have a couple other questions. Let me get to thing. Oh, one was for me. Uh, question for Jasmine. I am the person who scared your mom on the last day of the Edge Studio. I told her that you were born on the same day that Presidents James K. Polk and Warden G. E. Harding were born. Okay, this is William what? Joseph Reynolds, one of our die hard edge fans who probably started watching in when it began in nineteen forty two or whenever it started. <laughs> he was no, I don't know. The Edge Edge of Night was one of the longest running shows. So he's a, a die hard fan and he was there at the final show. Wow. And uh, and he's also a presidential expert. So when oh. you were born on November 2nd, he, of course, let me know immediately all the presidents that were born that same day. And I didn't even know. <laughs> Are you going to become president? Is that where it's going? Uh, Who knows? That was always my thing, actually. When we were in high school, everyone was like, so what do you want to do? And I was like, well, I either want to become Meryl Streep or the president. So, uh, I mean, was talking about what she wanted to be when she grew up, and it was either Meryl Streep or a, the president. I mean, or both. <laughs> yeah. We need a good president. We need a good female president. Yeah, no yeah. kidding. You're telling Are you me. Francis, I'm sorry. Yes, Francis <laughs> Fisher should run for president. Yes, that's I, what I just heard. <laughs> oh, born in England. Uh, uh huh. Yes. Yeah, that's my excuse. Yeah, that's a, she really went, took that one far to get well, out of that. Well, I went, I, you know, it's funny because I went to UC Santa Cruz for college yeah. as Are we, perhaps. No, so. Jasmine's talking. <laughs> um, and uh, every year on the first rain, they do a streaking run. Like everyone yeah. strips down naked and runs through the whole campus. And um, a lot of people take pictures, and I remember running naked through the streets of Santa Cruz thinking like, well, there goes my chances at ever being in government, oh. because there, someone out there has photos of me naked running and you, <laughs> in the middle of campus. No, I can't. Uh -huh. No. So she was telling the story about uh, on UC Santa Cruz, where she went, they have the first time it rains, you go... It, it's a naked run, and everyone on campus runs through the streets naked during the rain. And someone took a picture of her, so she said that's it for her for the presidency. Oh. <laughs> I, my daughter went to UC Santa Yes, Cruz. right, Sarah, right? About that, uh, that particular event. The naked run, oh. Yeah. Every I'm year. <laughs> so have you, so I, all of you obviously were actors, are actors. It's not Facebook, is it? I, yes, it I, is. Facebook didn't exist when that happened, so... No, no, no. This picture of us? I mean, it's live on the internet right now. It's live on the internet, but I'm not sure at, to, to tell the truth exactly what anyone can see. There's so many. <laughs> I know, there's like 800 screens. Um, sure. So you guys sure. all obviously, like, are actors, were actors. actors. 
Do, would you consider doing any other role in production, either in TV or in <laughs> theater? So Jasmine wants to know if we would consider doing any other role in in, in production, like producing something or directing uh, or acting or writing. Well, I'm I'm producing a play right now. Very, I'm producing yeah. a play at Pacific Resident Theater in oh, Bennett. Wow. It's a new play called Smart Love, written by. Uh, one of our actors, Brian Lesher, who's um, a working actor and writer. And I'm also um, an alternate for the, the only female in the play. So, yeah, I mean, um, I've been a member of Pacific Resident Theater in Venice for almost as long as I've been out here. So over 30 years, 35 oh, wow. years. 30. So I find it uh, rewarding and less stressful than pounding the pavement trying to get a, a pay job <laughs> yeah i bet it's, you're the one francis is the one page. francis is the one who who has the courage yeah. to continue the fight jasmine can you hear francis when she talks yes okay so francis tell us about how how things have changed from 1975 to today, trying to get work. And God, well, God bless you because, man, you've been yeah. doing it. Well, you know, there is such a thing as ageism, as you know, and uh, the roles just get thinner as you as you get older. And uh, it seems like they cast the same people over and over again. So it's just a matter of, you know, really seeking out the roles that that uh, nobody else wants or, you know, everybody else turns down, so I get them. It's like sloppy seconds and thirds. Uh, but I have a full life, you know, so I'm not, I haven't been pursuing my career like I was when I was younger. Um, but, uh, you know, every day is a new day. You never know what's around the corner. And you said, you were telling me once that, uh, that, Casting has changed so much now. Like one of the first questions they want to know is how many Twitter followers you have. You're yeah. kidding oh, that, me. That actually makes a huge difference in casting. Get that. That's insane. Yeah, mostly for the young people, I'd say. Right. You know, uh, older people right. like us, you know, it, it's like you've already established yourself in a way, so it's not about that. But the young people are really up against it. Definitely. Everybody, right. they're feeling the, the pressure of having wow. followers, and that's why people buy followers. Right. Buy accounts wow. And stuff. For Fran. Fortunate because, and the other thing is, is they, they want actors and directors and writers to, you know, self promote. So yeah. sure. take a lot of the work away from the publicity department, which is the one that's supposed to be promoting a right. show, you know? They expect us to live beat. Uh, the last TV series I did, uh, Resurrection, they wanted us to live tweet on Sunday night when we aired. And I thought, okay, I can do that for an hour. But then I started getting tweets from the East Coast. What about us? And then, you know, the Midwest, you know, when it airs in between the East Coast feed and the West Coast feed. So I found myself... The entire Sunday, you know, early evening till 10 o'clock, tweeting. Oh, my God. You're working. Or, You're working. It's working. It's working. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, yeah. and actors are expected to, to create their own work. I mean, look at how much is done online on YouTube and creating your own series and finding your own work. We used to have agents sending you out on auditions. Now it's... You know, it's hooking up to everything that's going on, all the casting networks, and submitting yourself. Are we making you laugh, Jack? Uh, you can't see what my mother is doing to you. Put some light on me. No, yeah, just put some light. My mother's putting bunny ears on you. I mean, well, so here's my question, since I feel like, I mean, I know, you know, Terry, that you have joined other boards, and you are, uh, you're very involved, and... Uh, France. Oh, Francis is talking. Too, but uh, you know, there's nothing. Yeah. Jasmine. Sound. Jasmine has yeah. a question. What, Jasmine? So I know that Terry and Francis, who still kind of have a uh, 
kind of a hand still in like productions, whether it's, you know, producing new work or being, you know, still working as an actor. How do you feel like as, do you feel inclined to try and be like leaders in the industry to kind of shift it to give more power to the performers instead of basically keeping them as working, uh, monkeys? Side of being leaders of the industry to kind of push for change and stuff. And I know that Frances does that already. She's been yeah, a member of SAG and worked with SAG for years. On the board at Screen Actors Guild. On the board at Screen Actors Guild and Terry, you know. You worked with Equity too, Francis, didn't you? I I was, uh, I got very involved in the fight the 99 for C uh, the 99C yeah. Theater when they tried, when Equity eventually did, you know, get rid of that, uh, that very valuable uh, thing that we were all doing here, which was being able Theater. to off the car, yeah. yes. you know, in between paying jobs and equity came in and fucked the whole thing up, Yeah, you know, saying that actors needed to get paid. Well, you can't even, you know, nine fifty an hour, for a couple of hours a day of work isn't a paycheck either. Right. right. So screwed it up. How, how did that um, affect the RT, Barry? Um, well, uh, we are an, oh, we are, um, we're not a member of the 99 seat theater plan anymore. It doesn't exist, doesn't but we still exist, yeah. pay actors and we are technically a, uh, a company theater, you know, mm-hmm. so, um, but, um, it actually at this point has opened up our co-op space. We have three spaces and the co-op is open to members to do a show a three-week show. It used to be three weeks, and technically you couldn't advertise and you couldn't get it reviewed, but that's all very positive when you're doing a showcase. It's like a New York showcase. And um, so, I mean, technically we could run shows in the co-op forever, but of course we don't pay in the co-op. The main stage pays. It's a stipend. You, you um, do it. You, you, you get around the paycheck thing because you're a company, right? And you were... You were ordained no, by actually, equity that you were able to do that, right? The co-op was supposedly sort of under the table in mm-hmm. a way. It was like, don't ask, don't tell. So as long as you weren't advertising or getting reviewed and no one was getting paid. I mean, that was the deal. The director doesn't Wow, get paid. what a great so, concept. <laughs> great. Don't yeah. let anybody know you're doing it. Hey, but we, but it was word of mouth. And we had, we would, we would have full, we would have full houses, our little house, our little black box. Same houses. with, with Jasmine. Yeah. yeah and this so. is why everybody please donate today. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because there's no money anywhere <laughs> for theater, for the it's arts the truth. anymore. Support the arts if you love, you know, yes. No, we sold out every single show of Little Shop of Horrors. We sold 62 seats a night. And it still did not pay for the show. Like we would have been in debt if we had not done fundraising like this, because ticket sales don't account for it. In this world, Jasmine said that they sold out every single show that they have done reboot, and still could wow. not pay. You know all the actors. And, yeah. Well, I mean, our ticket sales didn't pay for it. Like we fundraised to make up the difference because ticket sales alone don't cover it. Raise so that they can, oh, yeah. you know, get something to the actors for, mm-hmm. for the, the work. So also, musicians are expensive. <laughs> musicians always get paid. They That's sure it. do. See, musicians figured it out, man. Actors will do anything for a sandwich, and musicians are like, "Hey, <laughs> anything for a sandwich." It's so true. Right, <laughs> ladies. That when we we're on the set, first we'd have our our read through and everyone was like groggy eyed with their glasses on and we get mark where we're going to our, our kind of blocking and then the donuts would come yeah, right? Yeah. and it would be like a stampede you'd think we were all like five years old there'd be the st- every single day for years the stampede to get the donuts wow. get- <laughs> i forgot i ate donuts yes we do. <laughs> Yeah, we ate anything we wanted. We ate anything we wanted back then. (laughs) When I was the company manager at the Fifth Avenue Theater, we would always put out like a nice spread. And I mean, actors, I mean, you know, no one would ever, we stopped getting cookies and stuff because no one would eat them. So we had to like, everything has to be, you know, 
She said no one eats cookies in the No, they, I, we, we stopped buying them. They're all like fruit trees. <laughs> it has to be a vegan plate. Oh, good. <laughs> well, it's better, That's better for your energy. That's yeah, good. no, I mean, they're like everyone, I was, I was really impressed. Because we'd get, you know, like sp donors would want to donate like, you know, chocolate covered strawberries or like a big like pastry platter. And we were like, the actors won't eat them. <laughs> right? This is so crazy. Well, the other crazy thing is that about actors getting paid is that they there used to be a quote right. where every time you did a show whatever you fought for and and got as your salary that was your quote meaning that the next show you did oh you at least that interesting you know? and that was like that's the only way you, you know, could work you your way up yeah work your yeah. way up if that's you weren't a big out. star that's and that went out the window so you're either going to make 20 million dollars a show or you're going to make you know, scale, scale plus 10, right? Mm -hmm. That's unconscionable. It, there's so much yeah, money in film. Yeah. In, in so we sense, need local yeah. theater and we need support for local theater. Well, th that's where actors can learn to act, you know? Yeah. That's where actors and, learn to act, totally. Just go on a, on a TV set or a movie set and learn how to act. You have, you have to come in knowing what you're doing. And theater is a, is a great training ground to practice. And yes. fail because yes. you have a rehearsal process, you know, yeah. and you get to meet a lot of creative people, and that's 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 where you cook. Yep. Theater. And you have multiple performances to refine a choice that you made, or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And uh, soap operas actually, soap operas uh, in the '70s and '80s used to be that for actors. That's where you could actually go, and you're gonna, you know, you're gonna work two or three days a week and uh, improve your craft. And yeah. yeah, I found I found our style, because we, they don't do that anymore, of course. You know, no, we they... actually had a rehearsal process where we would every hour, you know, rehearse until we went to, you know, dress rehearsal, then, then taping. So we had the whole day. Now they just do it set by set. Yeah. Uh, and, and you don't even, you just show up and, they tell you where to stand. Wow. If yeah. they can figure out how to get somebody else to say your lines. Say your words. Yeah. Say your words. But it's there's no camaraderie. That's what I right. loved about Edge of Night is because yeah. we all on the set watching it play out in real time, you know? We and made we best watching. friends. For, yeah. For years. So we've got two minutes left. I wanted to give, if anyone has any... My God. Two minutes left. I know. If anyone, you want to give any advice you would have to anyone who is interested in either pursuing the arts or leveling up in the arts. So maybe we should she, take a trip to Seattle next time. Yeah, we yes. will. So Francis, we they want, Jasmine's saying, do you, can you give any advice to people who want to get into uh, Besides don't. <laughs> any positive advice. Yeah, other exactly. I'm just going to say. <laughs> If there's anything else Good you luck. Think of doing, do that. <laughs> My <laughs> advice would be study plays. Yes. Go yes. to acting classes and do pieces from a popular movie. television yes. show yes. or a movie. You need to do work on the classics because there's a reason why they're classic, is because they are tried and true. And there's a beginning yes. and a middle and an end and developed characters that have you know, stood the test of time. That's where you'll learn about language, you'll learn mm. about character, you'll learn about plot. And uh, that would be my Absolutely. advice. Absolutely. My advice is always train like you would for any other profession. Just because you're gorgeous or you're athletic or you're famous in some other way or I've always wanted to do something on stage. I mean, good, whatever, you know, but learn your profession, train study it's a craft yeah it's, it's a craft. craft get out there learn the classics like she said because you're you know you're going to get everything from there um, i remember one time i had a really long scene rosie yeah and i was trying to learn it and it was it was really hard for me and i remember you came up to me and this is really early because i had not really studied at that point 
and you said, just break it down into beats. And I mm. went, what's beat? <laughs> so you tell me that. And it yeah. really helped me to Good. understand what the changes were. Yeah. You know, it was, uh, it was really valuable. I was, what, yeah. 26? I was very young. Theater training but, is extremely valuable. And Francis and I auditioned also for the actor's studio and got in and would run over there and do a session at lunch hour and come back. I mean, and then my favorite story quickly about that actor studio thing, because it would drive the pro Joe, the prop guy, remember sweet Joe. So yeah. I had a bed scene with somebody and then, uh, right before dress rehearsal, Joe went over and made the bed cause it was the morning after. And I'm like, and I'm doing, <laughs> and I'm studying with Lee Strasberg at the time. Right. And going, no, no, Joe. And I ripped that bed to shreds and had the pillow hanging off. It was just, you'd look at it and go, oh my God, what did they do in there? And, and I said, this is the way it has to be. And Joe, who we all loved, looked at me, looked at the bed and said, animals. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Thank um, you all so much for putting up with the madness. <laughs> And for taking your time to come and chat. Raise lots of money. Raise, Raise lots, lots of money. Thank you. We're getting pretty close. I know we've raised a couple other hundred while we were talking. So thank you. Thank you so much. I know Francis can't hear me, but I love you, Francis. <laughs> Jasmine said she loves us all. And yes, we'll go to Seattle next year. It'll <laughs> yeah, be fun. And we'll, and we'll see the green show. Yes, we'll come see Yes, you. come in May. Come see Sweeney. It's going to be good. I love you. Thank you. Bye, Jasmine. Bye, Terry. Bye. So good to Bye. see you, Terry. Thank you so much. And then there was just me.